<laughs> Judy's, Judy's embarrassing me. <laughs> anyway, it's taken, uh, it's taken a while to get to the, this point on my carving because the other day I was trying to uh, put new floor in our utility table, table, utility trailer, which we used to haul around our uh, four-wheeler. We use around this place constantly. I had to take it all the way up to Joplin. So anyway, in doing that, I almost broke my leg. It really banged it up good. Still hurts. I have to hobble around like, uh, I don't know if you remember that old TV show with Walter Brennan in it where he'd hobble around and his, his arms would go up and down. That's, that's just about what I'm doing now. But anyway, to uh, speed this along, I've gone ahead and painted the feathers on this one. I've done a little decoration in here on his uh, clothing. Not, not much, just something simple. I've touched up all the little holidays, and believe me, there were quite a few, as there always are when you paint uh, wet on a piece of wood. You just have to, before you go any farther, you got to stop and take care of all those. Well, I'm pretty sure I've taken care of all of them. So the only thing left for us to do with this is to uh, put our designs on there and just a little bit of facial paint. Okay? And uh, but before we do that, what I want to do, I want to do an experiment to make sure of what I'm thinking will work. So we're going to do that here in just a second. But also, before I want to paint any kind of design on the robes or his face, I want to have the piece varnished and dry. That way, if I make a boo-boo, I can take that off without messing up the piece. If I don't do that, when I try to put some uh, de decorations on his face or down here on the lower part of the robe because it's uh, not been varnished, it would bleed and I don't want that. I want those lines to be sharp. So after we finish this video, I'm going to varnish this like I always do with uh, uh, satin finish Minwax varnish. And then once it's dry, we'll come back in the next video and finish him up. He's basically finished right now, except for just a couple of declarations. But the experiment I want to do is on his eyes. I want to see if by putting a couple of little drops of uh, epoxy on his eyes are going to be enough to where uh, I don't have to worry about doing white. Okay? So we're going to do that right now. Okay, I'm going to take him all apart here. Here's what I'm going to use, the epoxy. These are, I just, you can find this down Lowe's, Home Depot, just two parts, five minute epoxy. Works good. Okay? And get you a toothpick, round toothpick, that has a real sh sharp point on it. You want a sharp, the sharpest point you can get. So looking at that, it's this one here. Now squeeze, squeeze me out equal drops of that. So I'm going to stir those all together. Now it's my hope that in doing it this way, it's going to create that highlight. You know, when most people paint it on there with a white dot, but I don't like to do that. I like to make that highlight just as accurate as possible. So it it just looks lifelike. Get you a little bitty drop on the end of your thing. And very carefully don't want to touch any of the surrounding area. Sorry, I'm moving it around. All right, let's try the other side. That's pretty big. I don't want it, don't want it too big.
there. See that highlight just appears. See it? I think I picked up some paper fiber when I was stirring it. Yep, I sure did. Okay, now let's just turn around here. There, see it? I see a problem right there. There's two highlights. Can't have that. Easier to see this way. I'm going to have to do this again once the piece is painted. But anyway, that's what I wanted. See it? Why are you doing it so far away? Huh? So they can see it move around. You can't see it move around? The highlight there. See that highlight I follows that? It. Yeah. See how it follows? Yeah. That just create that brings your piece alive. It's not painted. See, even in the shadow, it does it. So that works. I like that. Okay. So, like I said, we're going to uh, go ahead and varnish the piece. And, to, and tomorrow morning, hopefully, we'll be back again. Uh, there I am. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, tomorrow morning we'll be back again and hopefully wrap this thing up. So uh, until, then, until then I'll talk to you later. Just for a little aside here, uh, here's a book, one of my favorite books. This is called The Searchers by Glenn Frankel. And what he does in this book, some of you may have read it, but what he does in this book is he tells two stories. He tells the story of Cynthia Ann Parker and her capture by the Comanches which the movie The Searchers is pretty well based on. And it tells the, another story of John Wayne and John Ford who made the movie The Searchers. But the, the way it's meld, meld together, it just creates such a fantastic story that uh, I don't want to pass this book on to the local library. You know, you throw a book in the box and you never know what, what happens to it, whether they keep it or toss it or what. It's too good of a book to uh, disregard. So I just thought, if one of you out there wants this book, send me an email and I'll send it to you. I'd rather have it go to someone who's going to really appreciate reading this story because it's worth it if you like the Old West as much as I do. So uh, it's a big book, it's 400 and some pages, but believe me, you will enjoy this book if you like John Wayne, if you like John Wayne, John Ford's movies, and especially if you like history, which this is one of the greatest stories ever told about the Comanches and uh, the effect that they had on the Old West. And uh, Cynthia Ann, she gave birth to Quanta Parker, one of the greatest Indians chiefs. And uh, anyway, if you would like the book, just send me a note, and the first one I get gets it, okay? So, again, talk to you later.